Handballstage. A year ago, my ex-girlfriend, she found out she was pregnant. She did tell me that she had an abortion. The abortion thing? Yes, that idea did happen. I never loved you, and I never wanted to have a baby with you. I thought there was no baby until they called me up and told me about it. He was up for adoption. I never told you about the baby right, because on. you can't take care of that him. I want to keep your son. Yes. Yeah. What gives you the right to decide whether he's ready to be a father or not? That baby is going to go home with me. I thought adoption would be the best thing for him. The good news is you get to see your son in one week, right? We're going to be there. On the morning of June 14, 2007, the body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station. My daughter was a great kid. We need your help to help us catch this guy. The police have done everything they can. They need your help. Welcome to the show. My guest is Sean. Sean, you called. Why are you here? Well, Steve, I'm here today to talk about about a year ago, my ex-girlfriend, she found out she was pregnant and that uh, she came to me and said that she wanted to have an abortion and me to pay for it. And I said, no. So I broke up with her. And why did you say no? Because you wanted her to I have don't the believe child? In, I don't believe in okay, abortions. Okay, so you wanted her to have the child. Yeah, I wanted her to have a child. And since then, about two months ago, I got a call and uh, it was a place for foster care that told me that I had a son in their custody and it was up, he was up for adoption. And at that point, I was kind of shocked. So they wanted me to come down for a meeting. And so they told me that they wanted me to sign my rights over as parents so he can go for adoption. And I said, no. And what, they just- What did you think happened after you broke up? Did you think she, had an abortion? Yeah, well, she, uh, I, call, I contacted her once since then, and she, she did tell me that she had an abortion. So you thought, well, there is no baby. Yeah. I thought there was no baby until they called me up and told me about it. So you had to be pretty shocked. You're here all this yeah. time, you're thinking she didn't have the baby. Now you found out she does have the baby. Yes. Did you call her up and say, hey, what the hell's going on here? No. Uh, they, uh, they had a meeting with me. Uh, with her, and I, I talked to her, and I said, I said, why are you doing this to me? And I was like, you told me that you love me and that you wanted to have a kid with me. And I was like, how are you going, how are you going to do this to a baby? And she didn't have no answer, and they still wanted us to sign our rights over, which I didn't think I wanted to. You want to keep your son? Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm I, I, I was, I, it's got to be. I see that you're a little bit rattled, but and. I got to imagine you're a young guy. You're what, 19 years old? Yes. First of all, becoming a father at 19 has got to be tough, and you know it yes. can't be the easiest thing in the world. But to think like, okay, you know, it'd be like somebody coming out of the audience and saying, "This is your son, Steve." I'd be shocked. Yes. You know, all of a sudden you have a son that you didn't know about. Now, I know it's in a difficult situation where you're finding out, like they're trying to get you to put the baby up for adoption. But when you find out that you have a son, what, what was going through your head? What was your feeling? My feeling was, like, I was shocked about it, but I was happy at the same time. Like, tears came from my eyes. Like, I was happy because it's my first kid, and it's a boy at that, and I was wanting to be there for everything, and, like, cutting his bill cord, and she didn't tell me. She told me that she had abortion. Like, it was, it was really shocking to me, and all I wanted to do was fight for him, and so... After I told them that I wasn't going to sign my rights up for the baby, that I wanted to fight for him, they said that they had involved children and youth. They came and checked out my house, and they cleared everything. I took parenting classes and everything. They cleared it, and they said that I should be getting my son. When you were dating, and your girlfriend is Michelle, or yeah. was Michelle? Yeah. How long had you been with her before she became pregnant? Probably like four or five months. So you were dating four or five months, and were you guys getting along? Did, did yeah. you get along? Good yeah. relationship? Good relationship. And you broke up because she wanted to have an abortion, and yes. you, didn't, you didn't want to have that done. Yes. And that's why you guys broke up. Yes. Do you have any feelings for Michelle now? No. I have a, a girlfriend right now, and she, she's, she's real good to me. 
we're engaged actually, and uh, we should be getting married soon. But we have a good rela relationship. Her family, she's they, uh, her family's been supporting me, like the whole time with the son. They've been trying to help me get him. They've been calling up lawyers and, and stuff. And you've done everything you can. You took yeah. the parenting classes, your apartment checks out. Like, I call every day for the have, last... Have you got a chance to meet your son yet? I haven't even got a chance to hold him or meet him. All I have is a picture of him. And how long have you known you've had a son? For about two and a half months now. And you haven't got to see your son? No. And why is that? Well, they said that I had to wait till everything was cleared, in which everything has. And they keep telling me that the people that are holding them in the foster care or have been on vacation and that the supervisors from both places have been talking. And again, you've and never confronted Michelle? Just the one time when we had the meeting. And what did, you, what did you say to her? I just basically said, how could she have done this? You know, like, she could have gave me. I asked her, why don't we not even do this? I said, please don't go through with this. I said, why don't you just give me the baby and let me go home with him? And I don't even think you should. take care of your son. Yeah, and take care of my son. And what did she say to that? father. She said no. The abortion thing? Yes, that idea did happen. I never loved you, and I never wanted to have a baby with you. So what are we going to do now? On the morning of June 14, 2007, the body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station. We need your help to help us catch this guy. The police have done everything they can. They need your help. Why won't she give you your son? I guess she believes that I'm not the right person to be his father. Well, you, but you are the, the father. father. Yeah. <laughs> it's not whether they're right. <laughs> well, if she's putting the baby up for adoption, she must feel she's not the right person to be the mother. Right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, the first... The first thing that got me was... Why her... would she give away her own baby? <laughs> I, I can't even really answer that. But I know the first time when she had her first kid, she was going to put her first one up for adoption. The first baby she had was up for adoption, but she decided to keep it, I guess. Now she has another one, and this one, eh, let's put this one up for adoption. Yeah. Well, doesn't that strike you as kind of like, why is she up. having babies? Yeah. <laughs> if you're just going to have babies to give them away to other people, to strangers? Yeah. And again, if she doesn't want her baby, why wouldn't she give it to the father? If you're saying, hey, I'm stepping up to the plate. I want my son. Give me my baby. Why wouldn't she give you your baby? A <laughs> uh, thing that kind of shocked me was... When, when I went down there, they were trying to say that the, for me to sign on my rights. But uh, the thing that really shocked me was that my name ain't on the birth certificate. And I said, why, so why are you guys trying to get me to sign up my rights if you guys are saying that I'm not the father now? Because they kept giving me two different stories, that I was and then I wasn't. And they kept switching up stories on me. So, like, everything's been shocking to me. I've been having a hard time with everything, with coping with everything. I've been calling and just trying to get everything straightened out, but they keep giving me the running around. Are you ready to be a father? Yes. And you could... <laughs> and this is a picture of your son? Yeah. Do you know your son's name? I mean, on his birth certificate, because she didn't give him a name when he was born, uh, it says baby boy But they gave him the name Nathan, the foster family that he's been staying with. They gave him Nathan, which I decided to keep if I get him, because I like the name. But 
that's all I know. Like, I mean, that's the only thing I've seen. When I see you look at your son, I could see, like, like pain come over you. There's a lot of pain. I just, I just want to be there for him. I just, I want to see him grow up. I want to take him to school. I want to be there for his game. I want to be there for everything for him. I want, I want to tell him I love him. Like I used to say, like it's funny, but I used to say that I love him to the picture, and like pray that he will come, that he'll come to me. But it's hard. It's nice to hear a young man take it so seriously, to be wants to be responsible, that kind of gets the importance, the, the magnitude of having a child. I have so many people on my show that just, it means nothing to them. They don't care about their children. So I just want to say it's refreshing to have somebody like you. Now, hopefully, the best part is that you'll get to be his father, like you said. Tell him you love him, be there as a father, be there. Well, I'm going to bring Michelle out, and I'm sure you got some questions for us, so <clears throat> let's bring out the woman that had your baby, and she didn't tell you about it. Let's bring out Michelle. I never told you about the baby right, because you can't take care of that. You want to keep your son. Yes. Yeah. What gives you the right to decide whether he's ready to be a father or not? The body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station. She was eight and a half months pregnant. We need your help to help us catch this guy. The police have done everything they can. They need your help. You are the cop. Get off my stage. Let's bring out Michelle. First of all, Sean, nah. you First do off, not. No, you no. Are you not need to ready tell. To you need to listen to me because I am ready to have a baby. I'm no, ready. I'm, I'm ready to raise him. I already have a child. You, you don't, don't even, know how hard it you're is. You're not even around for her. When how I was with I you, was, when I was with you, Sean, I am always there. When I was all with you, time. no. When I was with you, all you used to do was go out and party. That's all you did. As soon as that go baby was asleep, yeah, you had your family watch the kid for you. That's all you did. I'm ready to be a father. I got a good house. I got good everything now. And that baby is going to go home with me, and he's going to have a live a life like me, live better like me. Just because my <laughs> did. Right. And about the thing that I loved you, I never loved you, and I never wanted to have a baby with you. Okay. We were only together you told me, not you told even me. two months, Sean. Oh, that's Not what even it is? two months. Okay. It was a mistake, and I just wanted to get past it. Mm. That's not what you told me. You was over my house every day. If you didn't love me, you was over my house every day. Uh, you wasn't over my house I every day? I think you're delusional. That's no. what I think. No, I'm not delusional. You was over my house no, every day. I you told me delusional. that you loved me. You told me you want to have a kid with me. And then, uh, if I ain't mistaken, you told me you want to have abortion because your okay. told you that would be best. And then I told okay. you, and you asked that me to pay happened. for it. And that never happened? No. Yes, it did. No. And you asked me okay, to pay yes. for it. The abortion thing? Yes, that idea did happen, but my I was yeah. never okay with that. That's why it didn't happen. Okay. And then you gonna place him in a services to for, yeah. uh, for adoption? To no. give him a better life, Sean. He can have a better life with me. I'm his father. Yeah. That's the real life. That's the real life right here is with me. Not... Why did you bring me on this show to tell me this? Uh, why? Because you're the it's one who's not, put... No, 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 no. Yes. It is not my decision to give the baby to you or not. It is not my decision. You're the one who put me and well, you baby did, you did make decisions where you took it out of his hands, right? What right do you have not to, one, tell him you got rid of the baby when you didn't. Why wouldn't you tell him, yeah, I'm pregnant, I'm going to have the baby. He's the father of the child. What gives you the right to tell him otherwise? Steve. 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 She don't have no reason to tell me otherwise. No, I want to know. I want to know. What gives you the right to say, I'm not going to tell you you have a baby, and I'm going to give it up for adoption. He's the father he of the child. He wasn't ready. He's not ready. What he gives has you no idea how are hard Are you it ready? Is. Yes. 
I well, don't if you're ready, then why are you giving your baby away? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last part. I don't have enough money to take care of another baby. Okay, so you, you can't you responsibly take care of another child? No, I can't. Well, then why are you getting pregnant and having more children then? It was what? A mistake. A mistake. Everybody has mistakes. And Everybody I did the right has thing mistakes. and gave the baby up for adoption because Sean Who says was that's so the right thing? Here's a man who got you pregnant. He says say he right wants thing. his baby. Does he have no say? Only the woman has a say? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't a man have equal right to his child? Yes, he well, does. Well, then why did you steal that away from him? Um, maybe because he was nowhere to be found. What was I supposed to do? Well, you told them you were getting rid of the baby. That's what I wanted to do with the baby. But you didn't. I didn't. You have one child already, right? How come you didn't give that baby away? I thought I was ready. But you're keeping that one. She's, yeah, she's old enough now. Oh, so they, when they get to be old enough, then that's a good time to keep them? No, I've had her. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be mean here, but I want to know how you make decisions of which babies you have that you'll keep one but give another one away. I was young. I was selfish. I didn't know what I was getting into, really. I thought it was going to be easy. I really did. And it was very hard, right? It was. It okay. was very hard. So then you had a baby and you discovered, wow, I'm 17 or 18 years old, right, when you had your first baby? This is very tough. Mm -hmm. Then how do you put yourself in the same boat right, right afterwards again? How do you end up being pregnant again, not ready to take care of a child? The first time, yeah, you made a mistake. Second time, don't you learn from your mistakes? Be a little smarter? Maybe use protected sex so you don't bring children in? You're right. I was irresponsible, and I thought it was the best thing for the baby. When you were seeing him, what did you think of him as a guy? I, I still think he's nice. You he's, think he's a nice guy? He is a nice guy. Good guy? Yeah. Well, then, I never uh, be mouthed him. Okay, I don't well, know why the adoption place said I did. Well, if he's a good guy and a nice guy, why won't? Why wouldn't you say, like he said? Why wouldn't you say, well, you want the baby? You're the father. You're a nice guy. You're a good guy. Here's your son. I thought adoption would be the best thing for him. Babies are not disposable. So what are we gonna do now? What gives you the right to decide whether he's ready to be a father or not? What gives you the right? I think the moment you're sleeping with him and having unprotected sex, I think you're giving that guy the right to be a father. Do the right thing. You know, babies are not disposable. I, I, you know, once you have a baby, I don't think you say they're mistakes. They, there's a human beings by your action, and I think you know, you know, yeah, mate, did you plan on it? No. But you know going in damn well that if you're having sex, there's a good chance you might have a child. I mean, let's face it, we know that's why you do it, because babies are made that way. You don't need sex ed, Steve mm -hmm. Wilco's class. But I, I, I see pain on this guy's face. I mean, when he looked at the picture of his son and the, the sorrow of not having his child, and you, you're just like, well, I'm not ready for this one, and this one's old enough, and I want to give this That's one away. That's not even how it is. Well, you tell me how it is then. I thought I was ready, and I, I really wasn't. It was hard. 
and I realized that. And then when uh, I got pregnant again, I thought adoption would be the best thing for him. Okay, I understand that you thought adoption would be a good thing, but don't you have a moral obligation to at least discuss it with this man before you open up that door? Yeah. <laughs> How about when you're having the baby? Wouldn't you say, hey, I'm going into labor. You might want to be he here. Was, I didn't know where he was. I didn't know his number. Did you try? Did you, at one point I, when you decided that you weren't going to have abortion, did you make any effort to say, hey, I'm going to have the baby. I want to let you know now. How was I supposed to let him know when I had no idea where he was? You know what? You, is it just excuses? Just say, I didn't, want, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to tell him. Why don't you just tell the truth? You didn't make any effort. You weren't going to plan on telling him. You're just going to do whatever you chose you wanted to do. He's not... Well, he's not ready to be a father. I'm making that decision. Well, you know you're not ready to be a mother to another child. Again, how about showing some damn responsibility? I'm pretty sure I did the responsible thing. That baby. If you're not a ready life. to take care of children, then you shouldn't be having them. That's. That <laughs> it's not responsible to get pregnant and then try to give your kids away. That's not responsible. That wasn't the plan. It wasn't planned. What was the plan? There was no plan. The baby wasn't well, planned Well, that's at all. not being responsible. You're right. I was irresponsible. We both were. You say you can't find him. You know, oh my God, he's you know he's in the Himalayas. Who knows where he's at? He's <laughs> hiking Alaska. No, you found him when you needed him to sign the papers. I didn't find him. Well, somebody found him. Yeah. Because of some action you took. How were they able to find them? And they don't even know them. I don't even know. I didn't even remember Sean's last name. I don't know how they found him. So you were just having sex with some guy you didn't even know his last name? No. What, is, what does that speak of you? I knew his last name. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? No, I'm not. What's you. your last name? He told me his last name once when we first met. Well, then don't sleep with him until you know how to say it. <laughs> I'm looking at you, right? And I want to I wanna show my daughter, this is exactly what I don't want you to be when you're 16, 17, 18, 19. If you didn't know how to get in contact with me, why was you calling my friends and telling them that you had an abortion? And not only that, you told them how to contact me. They, they told me that you told them that I was on probation. That's how they contacted me, it was through probation. So obviously you still knew how to contact me, and you knew- Sean, first of all, I don't know any of your friends except one, and I never talked to him. And the only reason why I told them you were on probation was so they could find you. Okay, <laughs> that just don't make no sense because why would these people tell me that you came to them and they said they saw you and you told them, tell Sean when you see him that I got an abortion. Why would they say that? They just, they just make up. I don't know that stuff. Yeah, I don't know who either because I don't know any of your friends. But you made no effort at all to tell them you're keeping the baby and that you were going to have the baby and give him the option of actually being in the delivery room and put his name on the birth certificate. Maybe give him a chance to name his own son. Is that baby boy? You didn't give him that option, right? No. Well, and why didn't you give him that option? And you feel no. like giving this good guy, in your own words, he's a good guy, nice guy. Be nice to know if you knew his last name, but we'll get past that. <laughs> guy you're sleeping with. Oh, what's your last name again? <laughs> but you think that this giving some stranger a baby is a better idea than the own father that come out here and expresses that he really wants his son. That's giving somebody that you have no idea who it's going to be, but you won't give it to his own father. That's a better idea. I don't know. 
June 14, 2007, the body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station. She was eight and a half months pregnant. You are the cop. Get off my stage. At some point, are you going to take it seriously? The fact of having sex with men, that you are playing with little lives here, and you're bringing this life into the world, the greatest thing in the world, and my God, we're not really knowing who's going to take care of this baby, who's going to, who's really going to love a child more than the own father, the own mother. You made a mistake, and I want him to get his son. I don't know who's in your life being a mentor or a father figure to you, or if you have a father, but I'm trying to get across to you right now is you should hold yourself in higher regard. Don't let anybody have you as a woman to enjoy you as a woman until they, they give something of themselves to you, some respect, some caring, some love. <laughs> I, I almost want to tell everybody, treat every baby like an atomic bomb. That's how, that's how dangerous the situation can be if it's not handled properly. You're playing with somebody's life. It's got to be the act that's taken most seriously on this planet. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you now like I would talk to my own daughter. Like you are my daughter. I'm telling you. Take care of the child that you have. Don't start sleeping with other guys. To get in, if you're going to get in a relationship, make sure it's long term. Sleep with somebody that's going to care about you, that loves you, that's going to be committed to you. <laughs> you're an attractive girl, and I'm sure you're a smart girl, but you're not using your brains, and you're making a lot of bad decisions right now. And you're, causing, you're going to cause pain for your children. You're causing pain to this guy. And you know, even yourself, you're causing pain to yourself. Do you have anything you want to say to him at all? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have judged you so quickly. Um, I shouldn't have lied to him. I'm sorry. Sorry ain't going to ever change anything that's already done. I, that's not going to help me see my son for those first five months that I miss. That's not gonna help me say I love you to him every night, tucking him in the bed, or hold him and squeeze him and do everything with him that I wanna do. Like, I dream about that stuff every night. My wasn't there for me, you know this. I wanna be there for him, you know, cause who can, who can raise him better than me? Like, I'm not a foster family. I'm the real, I'm the father. Looks just like me. That's all I gotta really say. I'm sorry I can't change nothing. No, I can't change things. But the truth of it is, if you get your son, if you get custody, it'll be up to you whether you let her be part of his life. And I'm not telling you what to do with that. It's certainly something more, even if you opened your mind up to it more than what she gave you. But I hope you walk away from the show, and I hope you do think about your actions in the future. And I, I, I would hope that you would take the responsibility of having children a lot more seriously. The good news is you get to see your son in one week, right? You're going to yeah. meet him. Well, we're going to send our cameras, we're going to tape it, we're going to see this reunion, this joyous occasion between you and your son, yeah. and I'm, I'm envious of you for that feeling of the first time to see your son. It's... <laughs> so we're going to follow up, and we're going to follow up with you and how things go with your son, but both of you, both of you, work 
work as being good parents. How you're talking to now, there might be hurt feelings, but you're talking to each other civilly now. None of this, you, this, that, that. Children. Don't act like children anymore. You are children, but you can't, you, 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 you both. You gave away your, your childhoods because now you're parents. And if you want to be a parent, you don't. <laughs> so you really focus on, and I hope, you really mean it what you're saying up here, and I believe it. I can feel it in you. You want to be a good father. You want to take care of your son, and I hope you do that. And I certainly hope you might not like me, and you might not like the way what I said to you, but honestly, it's the best advice, and it's the same advice I'd give my own daughter of what I told you. All right? Today's the day I get to go get my son. He just come home for the first time. I've been getting stuff for him, setting up, cleaning, doing what I need to do to get him, make sure everything's right around the house. I put together a crib for him. I put together his bouncer for him, washing clothes for him, working on being a dad. And I'm ready. son I felt reassured that he's coming home with me and I felt better that he was gonna be with me and that I could finally take care of him and show him the loving that he needs. I can't wait <laughs> until he goes to school. It feels like a dream because just a couple months ago I didn't know I had a kid and find out I have a kid and everything just turns around. I probably wouldn't be feeling like this right now if I would have had him in the first place. People took that away from me, and now I got him now. I feel like nothing can stop us now. I started everything I've been wishing for, and waiting for, being a dad. Thank you, Steve, for everything you've done for me, helping me get my son. He says thank you, he just can't talk yet, though. Thank you. I love you, buddy. On the morning of June 14, 2007, the body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station. She was eight and a half months pregnant. We need your help to help us catch this guy. The police have done everything they can. They need your help. On the morning of June 14, 2007, the body of 22-year-old Jennifer Nielsen was found behind a gas station where she was delivering newspapers. She was eight and a half months pregnant. She had suffered several stab wounds, including a fatal blow to the neck. The attack also took the life of her unborn son, Ethan, who was due in only two weeks. Jenna's husband and two young sons were waiting patiently for her to come home that morning. Instead, they were greeted by detectives who would deliver news that would shatter their lives. This is the 911 call. 911, my cash emergency. Yeah, um, I, um, I don't know if this is really an emergency or not, but there was a, a car sitting um, in front of another newspaper box, and I could tell that it was normally it's, it's a newspaper um, delivery guy's car, so about the lights are on inside the car. There's papers are laying across the ground beside this car. So I rode around the building to see if he was like, outside the building or anything, but I don't see anybody by the building. And the car was empty? Yeah, the car was empty. It was funny because, of, like, the light was on the side of the car. The car was pulled up right in front of his, in front of his paper box. Okay, and you said you're calling from the payphone? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the gas station on South I'm still doing my paper up. And the car has Utah lights in place on it. It's a, I think what it's kind a, of car is it? I think it's a Honda Civic. You know what color it? Great. All right, we'll get somebody to go out there and check on them, okay? All right.
I'm sitting with the father of that girl that was brutally murdered. Tell me what happened that day. Well, um, my daughter was out doing her newspaper route for the USA Today. And uh, when she apparently pulled up to load the newspaper box with that day's newspapers, somebody jumped her, uh, took her behind the building, and stabbed her to death. It's got to even be painful every time that I know you're here and we're trying to make aware of the public of what happened and maybe catch the killer. But every time that you do this, every time you listen to that 911 call, it must be awfully painful for you. It doesn't get any easier. Uh, it's been a long two years, tough two years. Tell me a little bit about your daughter. You know, <clears throat> my daughter was one of those people that was the life of the party. She would walk in, she would expect everybody to take notice of her. She was bubbly, she was fun, she had a great people personality. Um, and she just wanted to be the center of attention. She was a great kid. God, I, I can't even imagine. Um, and what's the latest information regarding the case? Well, as of right now, we've got DNA. They've got a lot of evidence. We have a uh, sketch of a person of interest. We've got some eyewitnesses that uh, saw this person of interest. And right now, we need the public's help to help us find this person. And you've made it your mission to catch this person that's that has done this to your daughter. What have you done to help catch this killer? We've done everything that we can to keep this in the public eye and in the local media, and for the nation for that matter. Uh, we've beaten down doors. We've talked to everybody that we can. We've canvassed the area. We've put out thousands and thousands of flyers. We've had candlelight vigils. I do uh, speeches as many times as I can. I try to get out in the public or in the news as much as I possibly can to keep my daughter's case in the public eye because I need the help of the public right now in order to catch this killer. Um, I'm, I'm happy that we can help you in any way and I really hope that somebody out there watching has some information and that the person that did this is uh, brought to justice. Uh, we're going to give out all the information about the suspect to our viewers. But you haven't, because of the situation, and your son-in-law and your grandsons um, have lived out of state, and it's been a rough uh, time for you. You haven't seen them in a long time, right? I haven't seen them for almost a year now. Before we bring your son-in-law and your grandsons out, is there anything that you want to you wanna make a plea to the people that might be watching out at home? I really do. Um, I ask for the public's help. I, I ask everyone. Uh, that lives in the Raleigh area, in North Carolina, anyone in the country for that matter, we have a sketch of a person of interest. We need your help to help us catch this guy. The police have done everything they can. They need your help. We have a website right now that we've brought up so people can find the sketch, so people can find out all the information about what we're trying to do and what we keep doing. Um, I just need everybody's help. Um, Think of this, of, if this was your daughter, just need a help, really. Even as a policeman and, and, and dealing with these types of situations, but now as a father sitting next to another father, I, I really can't imagine the pain that you must be suffering. Um, the only thing that really I think will help you is if that person is brought to justice. Yes. You haven't seen your son-in-law and grandsons in, in over a year. We wanted to bring them here, so maybe bring a, a little bit of happiness in your life for right now. Let's bring them out. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, buddy. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Papa! Hi. <laughs> you guys look good. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> no. Nice to see Grandpa. Huh?
Well, for the people watching at home, mm -hmm. I would like to say that this is, a, this is an important one. This is something that we can do with this show. Um, these two little boys and this man oh, here, they okay. lost their mother, they lost their wife, the man lost his daughter. And I would certainly hope that if anybody did have any information, that they would come forward and help solve this horrible, horrible crime. Again, if there's anything that we can do, I hope this helps. I hope this helps your family, and I hope uh, it brings this killer to justice. I just thank you for having us on the show and allowing us to get this back in the public eye. It's only going to take one phone call to solve this case, and it's going to be from somebody out in the public that knows something that's willing to come forward. I mean, we have a reward. We're, I would like nothing better than to pay somebody for them to come up and give us the clue and, and the information that we need. Well, thank you for coming, and hopefully we can help your family. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Let's